shots fired by the government recently when they're trying to change the rules for property investors and they're really trying to manipulate the property market. I'm Andrew Malcolm from Mortgage HQ and today we're going to talk about what's going on in the economy and for property investing and you know what's going on in the property market in 2021 and into 2022. So what we've seen with the new government rules, I'm sure you've already seen plenty of articles about it, is what the government is trying to do is make it less attractive for you as a property investor to own multiple properties and especially less attractive for you to start thinking about buying more. So by getting into uh, the, the, the details of the economy, what uh, the government is potentially going to be doing is at the same time the economy might be slowing down because of recent world events, uh, the uh, pandemic side of things might just start to catch up as the money from governments all around the world starts to slow down and businesses that would have probably closed a year or two ago are now starting to close. The economy is starting to slow and now the property market which has been hot for a very long time especially in the major markets with these new government changes the, the property market is likely to slow or come to a stall or plateau and at the same time as the economy is going to slow down so what does that mean uh, well firstly uh, after talking to you know lots of potential property investors in the last couple of months i've seen people are in a position where they're thinking i'm just going to watch and wait and see what happens i'm going to focus on my current mortgage i'm going to tidy things up and maybe i'll think about a holiday home i'm not that concerned about buying an investment property right now that on the flip side is property investors that are already well uh, into their property investment journey they might have owned properties for 10 years or more they got a lot of equity because the interest rates in the last five years have been dropping so much the equity growth and the cash flow growth for established property investors has put them in a much stronger position so what that means is the experienced property investors the more professional property investors are probably going to love what's going on especially if they're looking at development uh, properties they're still going to have um, some tax advantages there whereas your normal mum and dad modest maybe already just own one property would have thought about a second or third property in the next couple of years if it wasn't for the changes they're going to sit and wait now i saw some um, you know, commentary from a leading uh, property accounting firm saying that this really is a socialist agenda what you're trying to do is influence the market so much that you know people that would be looking to professionalize and to to offer the market more rental properties you're pushing the mum and dads out of the market and you're saying the state the government is going to provide now this is you know, I, I do kind of believe that that is a socialist agenda and now that um, you know, there was mention that the government is going to look to give themselves uh, more power in terms of influencing banks and you know, potentially the Reserve Bank, then um, you know, what we're going to have to see is whether the new generation of voters wants uh, that more left-leaning agenda and they're happy for the state to provide more in terms of money, more on um, you know, policy around how properties should be built and, and you know, whether they should be supplied by the government or whether we're going to see a massive whiplash back to um, the centre-right side of things where you know, we're letting uh, maybe National Act come back and reverse some of these changes. So if you're an established property investor, probably not that much to worry about, especially if you've still got strong borrowing power mostly because the rents are probably going to cover any losses you've got from those uh, interest deductibility changes. You know, when we saw the healthy homes changes come into play, in the last couple of years, rents have gone up a lot higher than they would have if those healthy homes changes haven't come in to cover the costs of maintenance, to cover the extra costs of, of having property managers do more work. And especially now that the rules around you know, giving tenants more, uh, more power and, and more uh, no more rights as tenants what that has meant is the cost of being a property owner you now a landlord has gone up and it looks largely like that cost has been passed on to renters uh, with minimum wages going up and you no know, wages in general going up to cover that extra cost one would imagine that rents will keep going up and especially with the new changes the government has announced recently and if they if they do more changes around interest only lending if you put the costs up for the supplier, you know, the land 
landlord, the property investor, those costs are generally going to get passed on to renters. So, you know, short term, it is a bit scary when the government makes changes. Sort of in the medium long term, I feel property investors are simply going to pass those costs on. And if, if they can't pass those costs on, um, they in the long term, um, they'll figure it out. You know, a, a, a property investor is not going to stay in the game. Doesn't matter who owns a property unless there's going to be some form of profit. I've seen a lot of people asking about whether properties, you know, why would you buy a property investment now if it's negatively geared? You really got to do the numbers. You got to use the interest rates that are on offer. You got to use interest only calculations. All properties are going to be cash flow positive depending on the price you pay and depending on uh, the, the gearing and the LVR uh, that you're using. If you're putting bigger, de bigger deposits, then you're going to have. Um, Obviously, it's going to be cash flow positive at a certain point, but if you're not overpaying for property, they're all going to be cash flow positive. And the thing you've got to remember is return on money in the bank is minuscule. Return on property is, even if it's minuscule, say 3 or 4% yield, uh, you're going to get capital gains on that over the long term, and it's much better than what you're getting in the bank. So if people think that property is still a safe investment in terms of you know, a tangible asset, they're gonna keep investing. So the thing to keep an eye on is if the property market starts to go, starts to stall and the confidence in the property market starts to go down, if the economy does the same thing at the same time, one would imagine despite how much the New Zealand public has shown love for the existing government in the past and especially how they've handled recent events, what you might see is if confidence in the economy and things start to get quite bad in terms of business and, and you know the, the living experience, people are not afraid to, to change uh, government to try and stimulate uh, and bring about something new. So um, you know, very interesting times, watch this space and don't be discouraged uh, about your mortgage strategies. If you're deciding, hey, I'm not gonna buy an investment property, I'm gonna sit and wait, that's fine. Just make sure all your existing mortgages are either restructured or refinanced if they're not set up properly. And if they are, you know those lump sum contributions are gonna be helpful. And that take this period to learn about other investment types like businesses, shares, um, maybe you want to start looking at development type uh, opportunities or joint venture opportunities. Don't let the economy and what the government is doing be an excuse for you to do nothing. So if you've got comments about uh, the government, about the economy, about property investing, put them below and hit subscribe and uh, you know, let us know how you're feeling, what's the market, what, what your confidence is compared to what's going on in the market.